a little bit um, a little bit more busy. Okay. So I want to finish off method of characteristics by going back to our traveling wave example. Okay. And essentially what happens when we get a breakdown of smooth solutions. Okay. So remember our good old inviscid Burgers equation, okay? Where we have that u sub t plus u u x is equal to zero on r and t greater than zero. And then we have uh, our initial data, which are that u of x zero equals u zero x on r, okay? Well, we've, we've solved this before, but let's take our, our wholesale method of method of characteristics, okay? We don't have y and uh, x anymore. We have t and x. So there's no reason why we can't just look at the coefficients in front of each part of the equation and say, well, my characteristic equation for t should be dt d tau equals one, because there's just a one in front of the use of t term. My initial condition should be t0 of s equals zero, because t equals zero in my initial condition. The x d tau is going to equal z in this case, and x0 of s is equal to s. And then dz d tau is equal to just zero, and z0 of s is equal to u0 of s. Okay. Now, we already know that this satisfies the um, requirements of the, um, of the inverse function theorem. We sort of worked this out before. We can just show how that happens in this case, okay? So if we take x zero prime of s and t zero prime of s, we take the right-hand side of um, the x equation and the and the t equation, then we're going to end up with one zero, and then we have a one here and uh, a z here, which would be u zero of s, okay? All right, so this is one, so it's not equal to zero. So indeed we have our needed invertibility, okay? So that's fine. How do we solve our equations now? If I go back and look at them, I the easy one to solve is the t one. So for that, so now I skipped two slides there, I get uh, t is just equal to tau, okay? If I solve the x1 now, I get that um, x is equal to what? Well, let's look at it, right? I need to solve the, the z equation first, so let's do that. I get that z is just equal to z0 of s, because it's just a constant, and that constant has to be its initial condition, sorry, which would be u0 of s. So then x I get is u0 of s tau plus s, okay? And so these characteristics, right, as we know, they're um, straight lines with speed z, okay? Or in other words, u0 of s, okay? So to invert everything, okay, the invert step now is not too hard. I get tau equals t. I'm done there. I get that s is equal to x minus u0 of s, T. So I get this implicit expression 
which I remember from before for how, how I should write down S. So when I go to write down what U is, U is going to be Z of S of X, Y, tau of X, Y. Okay, I can handle the, the T part, but now X is equal to X minus, well, what's this? This I know is just U, okay? So again, I get back this implicit solution. And there's not really any way around this, right? Unless I know my particular initial condition. So now we know that if we recall from before, okay, f of u x t is equal to u minus u zero x minus u of t, okay, um, is invertible, okay, near initial data, but not everywhere, okay? We remember that from before, and in particular, there's gonna be some breakdown points at which I can't invert this implicit solution anymore. In particular, the breakdown is going to incur, occur wherever the characteristics x equals ut plus x0. So just sort of, this is a rewriting of the characteristic s equals x minus ut. I'm going to replace that with x0 there. It's just going to be some constant. Anywhere where these orig originate where u zero prime of x zero is less than zero, okay, will cross each other in finite time. Because what does that mean? It means my initial data, okay, have, are decreasing in some region. So that means the uh, characteristics emanating them will have progressively slower and slower characteristics, right? So I may have, you know, so these are my characteristics here. This is X and this is T. Okay, so the slope of this thing is given by u0, right? And if that starts to decrease, then at some point, this characteristics, these characteristics are going to cross, and we call that point in time t star, okay? It's our characteristic crossing point, or you would also call that a shock. Okay, so the issue here is that I have multiple possible values that you could be here. And so the inversion does not work anymore. Okay, so essentially the crossing characteristics, okay, they signal this breakdown. The question is, where is this T star going to happen? Can we predict it based on our solution? And that's going to be wherever U sub X, let's say, goes to negative infinity, okay? Because the idea, if you remember from the shocks that we drew before, is that these kind of waves, what'll happen is they'll steepen over time, and then eventually you'll reach to a point where they're multi-valued, okay? And as a result, they have infinite slope there. And that's a shock wave or, you know, happens in traffic problems is traffic jams, okay? So 
question is where do shocks occur again well we've already said it happens where characteristic shock uh, uh, where characteristics cross okay and it happens where u sub x goes to infinity okay but if we want a nice formula to derive that formula let's take our left hand side operator of our pde and just differentiate it with respect to x okay well then we get the following formula and because we know that that equals zero it's it's spatial derivative equals zero okay if we let v be a function that's just the spatial derivative of u okay and this is telling us that v sub t plus u times v sub x is equal to minus v squared okay so what well basically along the characteristic x equals u sub t plus x zero okay what we have is that dv dt the total derivative of v with respect to t is going to be equal to v squared okay and also note that v zero is going to be equal to well it's just ddx of u zero evaluated at x zero or in other words u zero prime of x zero okay so if we solve this we get that v is equal to what this is like a separation of variables problem okay and we have its initial condition okay this has solutions that look like you know some constant divided by another constant plus uh, t okay or just you know one over a constant plus plus t okay and if you work it out you should you should prove this to yourself okay check and make sure that you, you kind of get where this comes from v is equal to u zero prime x zero divided by one plus uh, u zero prime x zero t okay well so what so if we want to know where this diverges to negative infinity okay if u zero prime of x zero is always greater than zero basically for all of your initial data then um, we have that v is finite for any t greater than zero so we won't have any shocks in that case however if u zero prime of x zero okay is less than zero okay for some x zero well what's going to happen well eventually you're going to hit some value of t so that t times u zero prime is equal to minus one and you're gonna you're gonna have zero in the denominator here and you're gonna have a, a singularity okay so for some x zero in this case then basically v is going to go to minus infinity as t goes to minus one over u zero prime of x uh, zero okay call that x zero star okay and that's going to occur at a time that's greater than zero okay so the breakdown occurs at where t star is equal to we can put this all together now the minimum over x and r of minus one over u prime zero of x zero there call those x zeros specifically such that u zero prime of x zero is less than zero okay or in other words 
uh, minus one over the uh, minimum over x of u zero prime of x, okay? So wherever u prime of x is, uh, is the, its largest minimum value is where you would expect it to occur, okay? So if your initial data look like this, right? It's gonna be at this steepest point, right? So this is my um, minimum value then in x of u zero prime of x, right? That's gonna be my slope there, okay? And as we showed, right, what happens then is that um, the characteristics are gonna move faster over here than they do over here, okay? You're just not going to flow as fast in X over here as you do there. And so that means that eventually this characteristic is going to catch up with this one and you have a multi-valued solution. Okay. So what, what do you do about this? What do you do about this place basically where U zero has um, minimum slope? Okay. Or basically in this inflection, point, okay, uh, let's say we have a nice, you know, C2 function, then that'll, that'll be its inflection point. What can I do about that at all, okay? Well, at that point, I can only define what are called weak solutions, okay? And those weak solutions handle uh, discontinuities, you know, they handle the fact that I may have a wave that's like a, you know, a propagation of uh, just like a, you know, step looking function like this. Well, this enters what's called the theory of distributions, which will require a bit of functional analysis. So we're going to wait and discuss weak solutions. And in particular, the application of ranking Huguenot, okay, after covering distributions, okay. For now, I just want you to know how to identify this particular point where solutions break down. And there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. You can do it by saying, well, where do my characteristics cross? You can do it by actually just solving using method of characteristics and then looking for a way of, you know, multiple values of your solution. Or you can just use this handy formula, okay, which is probably the quickest way to do it. Okay. So we'll return to that later. Um, if you really are dying to know about, you know, ranking Huguenot, I can, I can point you to where that is. It's, it's later in the book, or you can just look up in the index. Some books, they deal with it now, but, um, it's, this is just the way that Chir and Levy sort of ordered things. And uh, I don't want to try and pack in too much functional analysis now before we've kind of dealt with uh, nice classical solutions, okay? All right, so that's kind of part two of this lecture, okay? I think we have about a good amount of time left, maybe 20 minutes.